is the Indian Ocean, and this is one of Durban's beach fronts. As we head back to our base in Johannesburg, we'll take you along on our road trip. Welcome to the Ad Bulletin, and thank you very much for staying with Morning Live. From Wednesday the 10th of July, the Standard Bank Art Gallery will host a retrospective exhibition of one of the most respected careers in fine art. Simon Stone's exhibition will be curated by the Smack Gallery and opened by journalist Neil Pandock. Unlike many artists today, Stone continues to paint, which is a wonderful discipline in the arts, and many people still enjoy it. Also, Stone reflected a time in our history which is quite important, which is the 80s, and which was Johannesburg. The exhibition itself was curated by Smack Art Gallery, which is an art gallery in Stellenbosch, who represents Stone. They had to go very far and wide throughout the country to collect these works into one place. Singer, songwriter and pianist Louise Kava is on a national tour to promote her new album titled Say To My Face. This week, she made a stop at Tasha's Gateway in Umslange just to give fans a taste of what to expect from the new album. It took me longer than expected. I was hoping for two years, but it took me an extra six months. The reason why is that David Guetta came to South Africa with a man called Joe Bermudas, and they're big dance producers, obviously, and uh, they heard the song I was doing with Pascal and Pierce, which was number one on the radio, uh, called Days Go By, and they loved my voice, and they wanted to work with me. So I flew to Boston and um, did two tracks with them. The one track I did is now the single on radio at the moment called Not Tonight. I also worked with Chris Tuck, and Chris Hoy and um, working with different producers takes time and you've got to manage people but I wanted to have the album that I wanted to have and I felt very free and unrestricted. The other thing is I wanted to get it mastered which is the final thing you do to a music piece. You get it polished and I wanted it to get done in London in Metropolis Studios so all this took a bit longer than, than my, I had previously anticipated but I really feel it was worth it. Mm. Actors, producers, directors and crews who bring to life soap stories and characters to life will be honoured at the first Royalty Soap Awards on the 1st of November. Entries for this inaugural affair close on Wednesday. They've become part of, of our lives. Now, if you talk about the SAFTAs and all the other awards, they focus on, on, on so many genres. We felt that in order to elevate the soapy stars and the producers and all the professionals that are involved, the only way to do it was to actually come up with an award solution that encourages them. Because remember also, the stories that they showcase and that they share with us, most of them or some of them are part of our lives. So they become part of our conversations. We sit around from six o'clock every day, you know, with our children, we converse in the stories that they share. Sometimes the things that they talk about could be something that you have an experience or it gives you an opportunity because you normally sit around as a family to start conversing about what actually you see on the soap. The Kute Institute is hosting an exhibition titled Post Oil City, the history of the city's future until the end of this month. The exhibition brings together projects from Asia, America and Africa and addresses serious questions in relation to climate change. They can expect to see a variety of models, so they can see um, things that have happened in the past, uh, how different cities have corresponded. So for example, um, there's an example in South America, how did they redevelop um, the urban transport system, how did they redevelop electric car systems in Israel. Um, but also um, models of the future. So, for example, one of the exhibition panels looks at um, cars that fly in the sky. Um, so anything from past uh, to future ideas on how to develop um, a new city. We're now passing through the freezing Harry Smith in the Free State Province on our way back to Johannesburg from Durban. Now, in other news in the Art Bulletin, Paul Edmonds explores a sensory engagement with form, light, shadow and gravity in his latest exhibition titled Seasons. It's his first Joburg showcase and comprises sculptures and an installation. Yeah, we, we understand it to mean the seasons of the year, but um, it's also kind of a metaphorical thing. and. Um, I investigated things like light, light and shade and things like that and in the sense that shade can be a season in a sense, a daily season. Or, I hope that the exhibition engages people's senses. I, I, don't, I hope it makes them, you know, they want to look at things and they, I hope they use their senses. 
of Tuani will be treated to the sounds of hard-working and award-winning bassist Konkwak Ngavinde on Friday night. Ngavinde's third show at the State Theatre will feature special guest Makwem Kubata. Ngabinde's performance is part of a series called Jazz and African Music Nights, which is a project by the State Theatre. Performing with Ngabinde on Friday night starting at 8 p.m. will be Johannes Mteto on piano, Keegan Williams on drums, and Brendan Ross on saxophone while Ngabinde does his bass and vocals. Each venue has its own merits. Uh, I love this venue because of the intimacy and the people are very close to you. So, and, and I like that because you get an immediate response which is also inspiring to you as a performer. One of South Africa's funniest men and thespian, Rob Van Furen, is currently wearing his director's hat for theatre production, Nothing Funny. The play opens on Wednesday in Senton and features state favourites Rob Vest and Damon Berry. It's a tragic comedy, so it's a, a wonderful comedy about two actors who suddenly wake up on stage and have new idea why they got there and slowly as the play goes on they discover a little bit of little clues here and there to what they're doing there uh, it is it is a very strange play but i don't mean the play is strange i mean the reaction to it is strange it's it's very fluid and it's very organic uh we've we played when we played in gravestown we had audiences of every possible age group and race group from literally from like 10 year olds to 80 year olds and mm. I think it's a very personal play for the audience as well as for the, for the characters. The Artscape Theatre in Cape Town has been the base for dancers from all over the country since Thursday. This as the Azisha Festival gives them the platform to celebrate their journeys in the industry. Translated in Sizulu, Azisha means let it burn. The festival name comes from the energy, passion and hunger to succeed that its participants have brought to jazz, art, dance, theatres, dancecape, now Azisha Festival stage since 1999. The event is providing a platform for the professional dancers to share their work while also nurturing emerging companies and creating space for community initiatives that build skills, confidence and empowerment. Azisha currently presented in the arts theater ends today from the indian ocean back to our base in johannesburg in auckland park at the tv center we certainly hope you've enjoyed our road trip thank you for watching the art bulletin and do remember you can keep in touch with us let us know what's happening in and around your art circles our email address is morninglive at sabc.co.za our facebook page address is the art bulletin and in brackets morning live our twitter handle is simply at the art bulletin until next weekend it's a goodbye from us